So here we go. This is the first meeting for the uh, what they forgot to teach you about our book club slash like uh, workshop club because this exists. There's a book, but it doesn't. It's not the full content. There are workshop slides, whatever we want to look at this as. But we're going to be going through the book and the slides and kind of learning all this stuff that Jenny Bryan and Jim Hester uh, put together for. All the stuff that you don't necessarily know that you can or should do in R. Um, so this initial meeting is just Federica and I, but I'm hoping someone is watching this video um, and that the next meeting will have some more people in it. Um, what we're looking at here are the uh, notes slash slide deck that we put together for the clubs. Um, this is available at r4ds.io slash rwtf. And uh, it's built using Bookdown. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit today because that's mostly what I planned to do is get everyone set up and running uh, for this, but we'll see how that goes. Um, as you see, when you come into the meetings and as we link to here, we do have a code of conduct that we follow that um, mostly involves just, you know, don't be a jerk. Um, and if anyone in the club or watching the clubs ever has uh, like a conflict with someone that they need some help with, you can message me on Slack. All right, so to get started, um, in general, what we do each week is someone, a volunteer, presents um, a chapter from the book. We're going to talk about that uh, on the next slide because chapter has a fuzzy meeting here. Um, I highly recommend volunteering to present. That's the best way to learn material because, you know, you have to dig into it and be ready to, like, teach about it. Um, that said, the person presenting isn't like the point is to have a club. So hopefully we'll have some people here and we can have some discussions about the material, not just like someone lecturing. Um, usually the presentations are like a review of the material, um, maybe some like discussion topics, maybe a demonstration. In this one in particular, I think we're, we'll probably do a lot of demonstration because it's about like, you know, ways to use our studio and things like that. So, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Um, and we have a GitHub repo that I'm going to dive into in a little bit about like how to get set up to present. Um, normally for the workshops, the stuff that's in our GitHub repo is kind of what you're supposed to do before you show up at the workshop. And so my plan for today is to kind of go through that and make sure everyone's able to get set up. Uh, in general, our presentations will be recorded and then they're available on YouTube uh, a day or two after the meeting. All right, so the pace. Um, normally, we would try to cover about a chapter a week. Um, that's still what I want to aim at, um, but it's okay to split the chapter if, like, if it takes too long. And then some chapters don't have any content. So if we look at, I'm trying to remember, yeah. Um, this, for example, chapter six doesn't actually have any content in the book. Now, I think there are slides that go along with this, and we'll talk about this as we get closer to these chapters of, oh, hey, there's nothing actually in the book for next week. Uh, do we want to skip it? Do we want to use the slides? And we'll see how that goes as we go through this. Um, we're going to try to meet every week, except for some breaks for holidays. I am um, an advocate of even if the person who's supposed to present like has to back out at the last minute, I really like to meet anyway and try to talk about something related to the chapter because otherwise the club can lose momentum and just fall apart. So we're going to try to meet every every week, even if it's like me doing an emergency backup presentation or something. Uh, again, we'll see how that goes because some of these might take a little bit more prep because uh, you know, like the book doesn't have any content. And so if you're presenting that chapter, the idea would be figure out what to talk about in that chapter. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, all right. And so the main thing I wanted to focus today, uh, focus on is getting your system set up to do all the other stuff in the book. And starting with that, um, we have this, uh, repository that is linked to from every book club repository that is how to get started how like how to set up github um the very first thing is you have to create a github account they're free 
um, you can create multiples, but I actually had one for work and one private and I merged them together because it makes life easier if everything is just kind of one place. It's up to you how you want to do that. Um, next thing you have to do is install Git, and I don't have specific instructions here. I hand you off to Jenny Bryan's book for that because it depends on your system. Uh, I highly, highly recommend, like within the book, she'll say, here's option one, here's option two, here's option three. If, if you can, option one is the easiest one. It's the most standard one. So whenever, you know, like if we look at the chapter here on Windows, option one, do this. Option two, if you can't do option one, do that. Um, and then Mac OS, they, you know, likewise, she has, here's the first option, but here's another way to do it. Uh, and another another way to do it. Try to do option one on all of these if you can. Um, yeah. All right. Next thing is uh, you want to install, use this, and dev tools. This book is going to talk about those packages a fair amount. Oh, good. We've got Sham joining us. Uh, glad to see you, Sham Sedin. Um, but yeah, these packages, especially use this, just makes your life easier for especially the things we're doing with when the, within the book clubs. Uh, so definitely install those. Uh, I know like uh, Federica, I know you've had problems with using older versions of uh, our studio and they aren't necessarily compatible. Are, are, do you still have that problem or? Uh, I have upgraded the system. Yes, so... all right. <laughs> I am glad to hear it because yes, following the instructions or like just doing what use this says to do makes your life so much easier. Just like use use the use this commands. And so uh, the next thing in the setup process is library use this. Uh, we're going to do that so that we don't have to keep tagging use this. I still do in almost all of these have the use this tag just to let you know which package these things are coming from. Um, but you don't have to you know, say use this if you libraryed it. And then uh, a step that I, and so I, I to, to like get ready for this meeting, I uninstalled everything to try to start from scratch and see, uh, you know, I haven't installed Git or our studio or R from scratch in a long, long time. And I wanted to see what that would take. Um, and the instruction we didn't have was this Git, use Git config where you set your username and user email. That's in, um, sorry, uh, happy Git with R. Like they, she says, after you're installed, the next chapter is introduce yourself to Git or Git. Um, so that's, yeah, this line here. Very highly uh, recommended. It'll make your life a lot easier because the next step actually assumes you've already done that. Um, it's possible I was only getting the error because something was set somewhere in somewhere like half set, uh, but still, so do this thing. You tell it what your username, and, and that's just your name. Like it's not your, it's not like a login name. It's a, how to identify you? So your full name. And then the email that you use for Git, uh, for GitHub would be the user.email that you want here. Um, you can have multiple emails on GitHub. So this would just be the one that you want to use or want to be associated with your RStudio instance. It's that user email, and actually it's one that you want to be associated with your computer. Um, so yeah, you do that. And then there's this command in use this called git sit rep. And this is like the secret to uh, getting everything working with Git in our studio, because it will tell you usually, except for this one, <laughs> if you don't have this one, it didn't have a good error message for that, but for anything else, They'll tell you, hey, you haven't run git vaccinate, which is a, um, a thing that they have and use this that helps you set up so that you don't accidentally uh, push like passwords and things into your GitHub repos. And it'll tell you, you don't have a, a pat, a, a, a GitHub token. And so it'll tell you how to do that. And so just this git sit rep is gonna be the step that you kind of run over and over until it doesn't yell at you about anything. Um, in our instructions here, we say probably the first thing it's going to tell you is this create GitHub token. Um, I specifically say just put a description of our studio, but you this description can be whatever you want it to be to identify how you're using that token. So the token is a um, 
a way that you're identifying yourself to GitHub. You're saying, hey, this is me. This is John the Geek. This is you know whatever your username is, um, this GitHub token. And you create it for a specific purpose. So you can create, like, I guess technically there's probably some limit to how many GitHub tokens you can have, but I've never hit that limit. Um, and the idea is create it for a specific use. Because that way, let's say you lose access to the computer where you've set all this stuff up for some reason, it got stolen or whatever. You can just uh, delete that token, deactivate that token, and then it won't have access to GitHub anymore for you. So it, it's a good idea to use like separate tokens in separate places so that it's easy to just turn that place off, basically. Um, so yeah, this will open up a browser window at GitHub and um, it has everything already filled in if, you, if you've already filled in the description. Um, the one thing I say here is there's a uh, expiration when you run this, there's an expiration days um, or just, I think it just says expiration and it'll be like, I think by default it's 30 days. Um, I usually, I think set them to 90 days, but the idea is how long you want that token to be valid. You'll have to redo this after it expires, but the idea is you want to balance between, um, you know, you don't, you want it to run out eventually. So things aren't just like automatically logged in forever, but I don't know, maybe you don't want it to expire. So you can set it to have like no expiration. So that balance is up to you. Uh, then you click this green button on that page that says generate token. And it'll give you this thing that looks like this GHP. And I say a bunch of letters and numbers. It'll be something like that. Um, that's GitHub personal. Uh, the P actually stands for personal access token. So GitHub personal access token, and then a bunch of numbers and letters. You have to make sure you copy that um, because once you leave the page, it will never show you that again. The good thing is, like I said, you can have infinite of these. So just if you screw up, just delete that token and start over and make a new one. It's not a big deal. Um, so copy that. And then we come back over into our studio and there's this uh, get creds package, which is used behind the scenes for, by, or one of the packages used by use this. Uh, get creds has this get creds set command. You just run that without any arguments and it'll ask you for, uh, I think it says uh, password, um, but your this token is what it wants. So you enter that into it and it'll save that into your get credential uh, manager. Um, and so that, you know, that's the first thing that gets it rep might tell us about. And so then we run gets it rep again and, um, you might have errors. It might say that there's something wrong with the GitHub token. So maybe you had to, maybe you like unchecked a box or something and it'll, uh, walk you through doing that. But the next one that you probably need to do if you haven't done it before is this git vaccinate. Uh, this is a function and use this. Um, it it's funny because right now everyone kind of has assumptions or not assumptions, but when you hear vaccinate, there's one particular thing you probably think about. This has nothing to do with actual vaccinations. This is vaccinating your computer um, against common Git problems. Um, and so uh, the main thing is like there are um, uh, like the um, Google credential that stores onto your computer and make sure you don't accidentally check that into your uh, GitHub repositories or um, some different like Mac files that can control, contain sensitive information and make sure those don't get checked in, things like that. Um, and then, so this next piece is optional, but um, I like it that, and I guess uh, younger people don't care where things save uh, on systems. You, they don't really think about file structure anymore. And apparently I'm uh, getting to be an older user that I do care about file structure. Um, but I like to set a specific place that use this is uh, using as the root for anything that it creates. So when it creates a new package or when it, you know, when I create a new project, it will create it within this directory. And so that's an optional thing that you might wanna do. And then you can restart your session and make sure that it is set how you think it is. That's what this git option use this uh, dester does. Um, and then you're all set. And when you um, work on a new project, you can use use this and it'll know where your GitHub is and it'll like everything will hopefully just work. The nice thing about this process with git sit rep 
Um, and like I said, with these uh, tokens being kind of uh, not a big deal to delete them and try again is if you've set things up before and you've like half set it up or uh, you set it up some different way or whatever, you can use get sit rep and kind of see how are you doing? Like, does it like, th does it understand how your things are set up? Does, can it find your credentials? Can it, um, does it see that you have all the stuff set up with the vaccination? Um, and, and you can just use this get sit rep over and over to make sure your system's up and uh, ready to go. And then the main thing is whenever we are, or whenever you're working on a new project, such as one of these book clubs, you can use this create from GitHub function, for example, to copy the notes that we're looking at. That's use this create from GitHub R4DS book club setup. And that'll create your own, um, I guess it does, that does two steps. Uh, if you don't own the repository that you tell it about, so the, you know, this site, this R4DS book club setup repository, which I guess to back up that word repository just means like um, a directory within Git and specifically within GitHub in this case of a, a thing. So of our book club thing, for example, um, it'll create a copy of that repository on GitHub and then it will pull that copy down to your local computer. Um, and then I, I also have a link in here to the use this pull request helpers. Those are highly recommended whenever you're working with anything within a book club. Uh, I suspect we're going to be going over these in this particular book club because that's one of the uh, things that the what they forgot to teach you talks about. Um, but the short version is, uh, I guess, yeah, I'll start with the short version. Uh, what the heck's a pull request is the first thing. So um, in Git, uh, so Git is this is, you know, the thing we just set up that is the like file or um, uh, version management, version control system. And you can push something. So push from your computer to your repository for to the GitHub repository. Or you can pull things, which is where something is in some other repository and you're pulling it into yours. So a pull request is saying, hey, I have this thing in my copy of the repository. And you, it, I want you as the owner of the main repository to pull that thing into your repository. And so that's why it's called a pull request. Um, GitHub, I mean, use this, has these PR underscore functions that help you make pull requests and help you manage things um, cleanly. Uh, we can set, skip the setup advice because we already did that stuff. Um, so we've created uh, some copy of something. And then what you want to always do is PR init and give it some sort of name. So PR init, you know, quote, uh, the thing I'm working on, or like a lot of times it'll, for me, it'll be like chapter one or chapter two or chapter three for the book clubs that I'm creating a pull request or I'm, I'm initiating a pull request, initializing a pull request uh, that will be something to do with chapter one. And so that would be my PR init. Then you make all your changes on your local copy of, um, of our studio, and once you're ready or as you work, you can check things in. Uh, in our studio, there's the Git tab, and you can just say, "Okay, check this thing in." That's called making a commit, and so you you check the thing that you want to check in, and you put a message about what did you do. So, um, it it says here that you added uh, formidable to adjectives. Um, I assume I haven't read this one recently, but I assume that they have the typo there on purpose. If not, I'll have to talk to them about that. Um, and then the next step, so once you think you're all done, you do this PR push, and that will uh, open up a web browser for you to, it'll upload everything to GitHub, and then it opens up a web browser where you can actually create the pull request, where you can um, create the thing that tells, uh, in, you know, in this case, it would be me, that you're telling me that you have the thing to put into the book club notes. And then um, you can, it, you know, it'll let me know. And I, uh, if you're doing it from the other side, you can do PR uh, fetch, which will fetch you like PR fetch 90 in this case to pull that down to my computer so I can look at it. Um, yeah, and okay, the typo is on purpose. Uh, and so like I could pull that down, I can make changes 
and then upload it. And then eventually I can review it and um, like accept it. Once that all is all done, I think we're gonna go down to here, but there's PR finish, which you call that at the end and it just, it deletes your local um, temporary branch that we made way back at the beginning. And it gets you up, it gets you in sync with what's actually there now. And so that always do a PR finish at the end once I've merged the, your work into the main branch uh, or into the main um, repository. Uh, and that'll clear, thing, or clear things up. Sometimes like if you are working with something that R4DS owns, uh, you would then have to push that up to your uh, local branch. And we've got instructions about like how to do that. We have, uh, there's a command that you can call uh, that I can't remember right now. Let's see, I can look right here. Um, you can do GERT, uh, git push origin will uh, update your copy on GitHub to make sure that your, your GitHub uh, repository stays in sync with the main repository. You can also do that through the GitHub interface. Um, you also don't really have to do that because your version doesn't matter that much because you're usually going to be making a branch off of, um, or based on the, the, um, main one, but it's still, it's good to keep things in sync. Um, all right. So that's, that's all the GitHub setup. Do either of you, I guess, two questions. Do you have any questions about that? And are you all good to go? Like, are you completely set up with all that stuff? Because that's really the main thing I want to do is make sure, I mean, you guys have both done pull requests, but is there anything weird that you do? And if like, is there anything different from that, that you do on purpose, <laughs> you know, that you think it's better? So do either of you have any thoughts? You're both I, muted. I, okay. I, I use the arrows so the, to the, pull and push. Uh, so, yeah, I used to always, um, like use the R Studio interface and you do like new branch and all of that. I have found that by adopting the PR init and PR push. So when you do PR init, it creates a branch on your computer, but it doesn't create it on GitHub. And so you don't have a push button. And it like it stops me from screwing things up. Like if I go, if I've started working, um, when I'm used to just using the push button, I might accidentally try to push to main and then that does broken things because you can't, you don't have access to actually push into the main branch on uh, the remote copy. Um, so basically just using the PR helpers uh, has stopped me from screwing things up a lot of times. So I do still recommend them, even if you're used to the using the UI, um, they, I think they help stop you from, from making mistakes. Uh, and then yeah. they, they, they like enforce good practices, basically. I, I, uh, you know, usually, uh, makes lots of, uh, and, and, um, uh, screwing things up basically. Yes. <laughs> or, or I push like, uh, an image, which is too big. So yeah. that, that sometimes well, I think I do on purpose. Because uh, then I'm practicing how to use GitHub. But, right. Uh, yeah. So, but you know, uh, you need to, that, there's some commands for amending the, the, the latest <laughs> commit, or sometimes it works, uh, sometimes it doesn't. So that there is a, a way to eliminate just the big files. And, right. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, that is something that's, um, kind of special to our, well, not, I mean, every, everything that you work with, big files are a problem. You don't usually want to check them in on GitHub because they can make a mess of the rep repository, basically. They, they make it hard to upload and download. Uh, but that is something that the reason, one of the reasons to do this strategy of where you create a branch, do your work, check it in, and then once it's merged, you delete that branch. The the One of the reasons to do that is if you screw up and you put some giant file in that branch and then, oh crap, I want to remove that. We, um, we do what's called a squash and merge, which means it like takes all of the different edits that we've made in the course of making that edit or that um, change, 
makes them be just a single edit and checks that into the main branch. And so that means if you uploaded a big file and then deleted it, if we didn't squash it, both of those changes are in the history and get like remembers the history. And so it will make the repository huge because it has to have that file there so that you can go through the history and upload that file and then delete that file. Versus yeah. since we squash it, since we you know work on a branch and we just squash it down into the one change, it's as if that file was never there. Um, so that is, yeah, that's a, the reason to work in branches. Um, all right, so how about, I mean, Sham, I think you use um, VS Code, is that right? Um, I'm not sure if you can unmute. Uh, I don't know if these things work. They might work with VS Code. I'm not sure because they're not dependent on the UI. So they probably do work with things other than our studio, um, which is nice. So you can kind of get used to using it the same way for anything you're doing in R. But I think that uh, he cannot unmute. So we will just, uh, oh, there, he, yep, he said in the chat that he can't unmute. So I'll just <laughs> leave it at that. All right. Um, yeah, so, okay, I think we're good to go. Like I say, I really, really, really highly recommend learning and using the PR helpers. I think that, oops, where is the actual book? Um, I think that that might be in here. Uh, but I'm not sure where it would be. So um, I don't know, we'll we'll find out. It might be in the book uh, as we go through that, but we will have the leg up because that's the first thing we need to do is you need to know how to work with the repo because if you're making slides, the idea is that you check them into our repo. So it's good to be ready to go with that. And I, I actually highly encourage people, if you're in this club, even if you're not gonna present, like get set up as if you're gonna present and maybe, uh, submit some edits to previous week's slides or do something uh, in that vein because that's part of the idea of this book club is get comfortable using these um, tools that might be outside of your day-to-day -day usage of R. Uh, so the next thing that they recommend uh, for the setup is there's this function in DevTools called has devel or has uh, whatever has development. That means that you're set up to install packages that might need more advanced things. Um, I recommend running that and hopefully, so I'm not sharing that window, but um, like when I run it, yeah, it says your system is ready to build packages. I think it'll give you error mess helpful error messages if you're not ready, but if you're not, um, there's some help in the, uh, 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 the repository, there we go, the pre-work repository from the, that's linked in the notes here. Um, and, and, oh, right, that's what it is, is that there's this, uh, within the happy get with R, there is a pre-workshop setup thing that talks through a little bit of things to do to get ready. Um, although this is, I think I'll get, um, but yeah, getting set up, the, the main thing would be if you're working in Windows, you need R tools, which you can get on CRAN. Uh, if you're doing setup for Windows, you need this R tools thing. Uh, for Mac, I don't, I think you just install R and then maybe you have to, uh, yeah, you have other things that you have to install. I've never set up a Mac for R, so I don't know, but, um, uh so yeah more things like e export and um like uh, um deploy the command lines okay things. and yeah you, uh, yeah you need like uh um, c yeah you need... yeah because it helps to installing the other things like that you might need it with with a studio uh, right yeah so that there's few things that you need um with 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 my i think it's it's um faster than than windows 
so it's funny. I, I see a lot of comments about people are like, oh, it's so hard to get things up and running on Windows, but our tools has all the stuff that you need to get everything working on Windows. So you just install our tools versus I've had a lot more problems on Linux where I'm like, oh, I need to install this library that this package didn't have. Uh, and it, yeah, some, a lot of times it'll tell you during installation that you have to do that, but in Windows, it just, it just does it. Um, so, you know, every, your mileage may vary, uh, but yeah, get set up, make sure that DevTools has develop, tells you that you're good to go. And if you're not, um, let's walk through it in, like in Slack and we'll, we'll make sure everyone is set up and ready to go because uh, we will have, I'm pretty sure within the course of this, that we'll have some things where we have to build a package from scratch. And so you need to have that ready to go. Um, all right. And then the other thing, oh yeah. The other thing I wanted to look at today is find my tab. That's not the tab. It is, uh, not that one either. Do I not have, I don't have it open. That's why, uh, Let's go back to the actual book. Um, they have this chapter 14 that we're not going to go over as its own chapter because it's literally just one thing is pointing out that within book down, uh, if you F, if you find, um, I didn't actually realize that the arrows will walk through like, so I can use my arrow key to walk through each instance of that word in all of the searches that it's hitting. Um, but like, let's say I came over here and I highlighted it over here. The only tr secret is you have to put your mouse back there before you can use the arrows again. But it's still, it's pretty useful to be able to walk through that way. Um, I knew that it would highlight them. I think I would, I don't know. I don't know what I had done before, before I actually read this part. But I wanted to make sure that we actually knew how to search. Like this almost should be chapter one of every book <laughs> that's written in book down. Um, just make sure that you've done that and that you're able to do it because, you know, let's say that we're trying to figure out how to um, uh, work with GitHub. You know, we want to be able to find all the places that they talk about GitHub in this book. So uh, there, this will probably be useful, especially if you're presenting, you know, chapter 10 and it talks about, uh, you know, liblock, lib location, and you want to know, oh, did we, did we talk about that before? In this case, we didn't, but you know, you might want to be able to look that up. So uh, I wanted to make sure we had that covered. And that's all I planned to do for this one. Um, we will be meeting next week. Oh, I guess the other thing to talk about is within the uh, Slack channel, we have this sign up. Um, I think it's called volunteer to present. That's how I have it tagged in the channel. Um, right now, no one has signed up for chapter one. Uh, the way this works is I will do it if no one else signs up, but I would very much like it if other people sign up, at least occasionally. Uh, like I said, that's the best way to learn the material. Um, if you sign up for something, I, I do highly recommend like looking at it as soon as you sign up, because like I said, some of these chapters, like it might be one paragraph or nothing, or it might be huge. I don't really know much yet in this book, but um I want to make sure that we kind of work out, oh, okay, there's nothing in the book, but it's covered in the workshops. So what should we use from the workshops for that week? Or should we just skip this? Or should we pull something in from outside? Um, so I really like as much as possible for us to go through, uh, and we'll talk this out in the Slack, but like everyone choose your what you think you wanna present and let's get this decided pretty early so that we can talk about, okay, what are, you, what are we gonna actually talk about that week? Um, and you can start figuring that out because it, the book is not, I mean, it's not even that it's not done, it's not intended to ever be completely done. It's like a framework of here are things to talk about in, in workshops and in discussions and things like that. And some of it just doesn't have any content other than, hey, you should talk about this. Um, and so I think it'd be good for us to kind of work that out. Like I said, maybe there will be some that we look at it and it's like, there's no content. Uh, maybe, you know, like if, if I had put chapter 14 in the list and it's literally one paragraph, obviously we're not gonna do a whole week on that one paragraph. So if you find something, you know, if, like this get to know your R installation, maybe there isn't a lot to talk about here because maybe this is just you going through and looking at what you have. 
Um, but I, I think we should look at the uh, workshop slides and see what else they talk about in this kind of section. Um, and I don't, you know, I haven't gone through everything yet to see what's available. This is going to be a weird club. I'll say that right up front because it's, it's workshops and a book and it's workshops that have run long enough that like Jenny, uh, Jenny Ryan always ran them and now has handed them off because she's kind of sick of running them because they've happened, you know, it's a, it's a um, very popular workshop and we're kind of stretching it out into a multi-week book club. Um, but I think it's going to be really useful. So I'm excited to see where it goes. All right. And with that, let me see. So I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see what uh, Federica and Shamsadine sign up for. And then we'll uh, bother other people. You guys get the first dibs because you're here on the, on the call. Um, and then we'll see what other people who didn't make it into the call sign up to uh, participate in. So. Okay. Thank you. All right. I will see you next week.